us. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Joe Cotto, and I'm the program manager for the Alzheimer's Association Vermont chapter. So my main role is to do presentations like these, but also volunteer management. So I work with people statewide to recruit, train, and support volunteers who co-facilitate support groups. There's one here that's run by Carla Camel um, that's been going on for a very long time, but also to um, recruit um, community educators that give presentations like these. There are 13 of these. This is just one of them. Um, my connection to the disease is my um, mother-in-law's um, husband passed away over the holidays. He had a Lewy body, and it was a um, roughly a 15-year journey for our family. We were all very close. They live in Massachusetts, and um, I do this work in his honor. Um, um, females are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's than males. Twice? Yep. Also oh, 66%? I believe that's the statistic, yes. Yep. Um, it is, it, did everybody hear that? It, Alzheimer's, um, as of most diseases and most things, um, hits the underserved populations the most. So minorities, women, all those things. Yep. Great question. Wait, what is that connection about? Um, lack of resources. Um, so in underserved communities, there's lack of resources and trust in healthcare professionals. So our work has a lot of going into smaller communities and giving that research. on health factors that we'll talk about today, on genetics, on how we you... don't know. No, nobody knows. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a higher likelihood that you'll, you'll have Alzheimer's, but it's unknown at this point. It's not known. Yeah. There's a lot of gray area in this work, <laughs> um, and it's really hard because there aren't a lot of answers. There's not even a cure yet. Um, but I think the most important thing, and I really enforce this, is to talk to your doctor and to advocate for things that you need or that things that are changing with your, um, with your cognition or with your executive functioning. Yeah, great question. That's two questions from the side. Anybody else? Oh, I like it. Okay. I love questions. So this is a, pro this is a program about prevention. And it's not to substitute a conversation with your doctor about any concerns. Okay. So the learning objectives for today, we're going to talk about sleep, smoking, mental health, physical activity, balanced nutrition, cognitive engagement, and social engagement. And what we've been telling folks all week is that you've nailed it. You've showed up here. That's half the battle. You're with a group. You're learning. And you probably walk to get inside up those stairs. That's all the things. Hopefully you're having a balanced lunch or dinner today. We're going to take about a minute to learn about the brain. The brain is the control center for the body. There are over 100 billion nerve cells or neurons created um, to create a branching network. Signals traveling through the brain from form memories, thoughts, and feelings. Alzheimer's disease destroys brain cells. I did not know that before this job. That was a new fact for me. How to prevent it? That's not possible, is it? It's not possible to 100% pre prevent anything, but it is possible to do things that decrease your likelihood of getting dementia. Yes, and that I'll talk about that today. One. Yeah, okay. of course. Let's say you want to have a test for Alzheimer's, genetic test. Mm -hmm. Is that covered by Medicare? I believe it is. It depends on your coverage and. Um, how that works with your local physician. I, I wasn't, I didn't have to pay for have, that. Have you had the test? I had a test 10 years ago. Did you remember if you had to pay? I wasn't charged for it. So okay. I didn't have to, so I assume that my wife is. I think it is, I think it is covered, but I think it's hard to find a place that does the testing, is what I've heard statewide. Some doctors don't do the cognitive testing, so you might have to go to UVM or to Bennington Clinic for that. And if your doctor does that, that's wonderful. Great question. I saw somebody else. Anybody else? Okay. So the brain needs blood flow. The brain uh, depends on oxygen and adequate blood flow to work well. It receives 20 to 25 percent of the blood from every heartbeat. A little trivia here. So the question is, or the, the statement is, Alzheimer's is a normal part of aging. True or false? Just shout it out. 
True. I would say it's true. I heard a mixed room. Okay. The answer is false. Alzheimer's is a progressive and fatal brain disease. Symptoms usually develop slowly and get worse over time. It is not a normal part of aging. And I'll give you one example so that you get kind of a feel for that. Um, the last call that we got in Helpline was from somebody that had put their sneakers in the freezer. So that's just an example. Or you might go to the grocery store and forget how to leave the grocery store. Those types of things. And it can be a lot smaller than that, too. Those are, those are kind of bigger examples. Dementia is the overarching term used, so um, Alzheimer's is the number one cause of dementia. So there's like an umbrella that we use to sh show the presentation. Great question though. So there's um, Alzheimer's, there's frontal tempora, de temporal dementia, there's dementia, there's mixed dementia, there's Lewy bodies. Does that help yes. answer? Okay. What is BMI? It is um, body mass index, how much you weigh and how that compares to other people in your height and weight um, index. And your doctor should be able to tell you if you're in the right category for that. So many factors, um, there are many factors that increase the risk of heart disease and stroke may also increase the risk of cognitive decline because the, the heart is related to the brain and vice versa and that's really the importance of this presentation. So there's hypertension, diabetes, and midlife obesity. So good cholesterol is good for the heart, and what's good for the heart is good for the brain. Another trivia question. It's never too late or too early to incorporate healthy habits in your life. True. You're all so smart, I love this. People of all ages can benefit from adding in more healthy behaviors. So here's some tips for healthy living. We're going to talk about sleep quality, smoking cessation, cessation, sorry, taking care of your mental health, getting moving, right, challenging yourself and staying connected. And you all seem like a very connected group, so that's, your, that's the most important thing. So with quality sleep, um, raise your hand if you get quality sleep. That's the majority of you. That's awesome. So what's your secret? You willing to share your secret? For quality of sleep, anybody? Good night's sleep? Exercise. Okay, exercise. Anybody else? Fresh air. Fresh air. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Are there, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Are there any other contribu contributors to good sleep? There are, yeah. Keeping the room cool. Okay. Um, and this is more for like my kids, I have to tell my kids all the time, like taking the screens down, like going to like a book or something quiet, okay. like, you know, turning off the TV before you go to bed, like an hour before you go to bed, no phones. Okay. They say leave your phone in on your kitchen table and with the alarm set for those of us that have to get up for work still, which we need for a long time. And then in your bedroom, there's nothing. So it's just dark and cool. So you're not checking your phone in the middle of the night when you wake up. Hopefully, or you can get what's called an alarm clock. <laughs> the good old oh. fashioned, remember those things that we used <laughs> to have? I threw that away 40 years ago. I did too, right. but I actually, when I got this job, I went out and bought one, because I was like, I want a good night's sleep, and it actually oh, works really well. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Right? Uh, okay, and I have another one, and, yeah. and that is that uh, Carol and I have discovered, if you pull the top window down, rather than the bottom window up, the air in the room changes oh, dramatically yeah. quickly. Yep. That's a good, I wish that my windows went that way. Talk about fresh. Very fresh, uh, yeah. A little bit up on the bottom. Fresh air is so good for you. On the top. You can Love feel it. the difference in instantly. Oh yeah, that's a great. What if you open your window, you have to turn the heat off. Technically, yes. Close the door. I do. I do close the door. My husband likes to have the AC on and the windows open. Because he likes fresh air and cold air. So, 
Yes. It takes all types. But yes, that's the whole idea is to, to have fresh air. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a question in the back? Yes. Um, I read that at night when we sleep, the brain actually refreshes and yep. cleanses itself of toxins. Yes. Is that, can you speak to that? Yes, I can. Absolutely. And I think it is. It's when you REM. I don't think the actual data is in this presentation, but I've heard that too. And I think it, that they, they're saying like, an average of six to eight hours a night that you need of like steady sleep, which I think is really hard to get. I really do, um, especially because I have young kids. Um, they're getting it though, so we should all get it too. Amen. Yeah. I need more than that. You need more. Well, how much do you oh, need? Yeah. Ten. I need the nine, at least nine. Yeah. And yeah. the longer I sleep, actually, the better dream. I have lots of dreams after 5 a.m. Oh, that wonderful! That sounds very nice. Mm. I used to be at a, I used to be a niner, back in the day, but now I'm closer to six. And man, it's the best feeling when you wake up and it's like you know the sun's out. You've had a good night's sleep. You're well rested. Love it. And your brain is clean. Yeah, <laughs> and your brain is clean. I love the brain. I love it. Yes, your brain is clean. Okay, the next topic is on being smoke-free. I'll breeze through this because um, I know that we're also talking about that in the next presentation. So smoking has a direct impact on the health of your brain, which we all learned about years ago, and it was, there was a whole campaign about that for public health. Um, so there are resources for smoking, for quitting smoking. There's hotlines. With your, you can check with your doctor about that if you're interested in quitting. The stat that I heard on, through, we have interns through UVM, and I think it was like, uh, um, smoke, what was it? Smoking two packs a day is equivalent to being isolated for however many. So there's like a direct correlation between being isolated and smoking cigarettes. So umbrella, it's all toxic for you. Um, okay. This is my favorite category, mental health. I tell everyone this when I'm doing my talks. I've been engaged in therapy since I was 19. It's been the best thing I ever did in my life. Um, I've been through several therapists. That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to find the one that works well for you. Um, I also believe in family therapy. I also believe in meditation and yoga, whatever you do to get your spiritual um, practice. And a lot of it is just paying attention to what's happening with your body. What does anxiety feel like? What does depression feel like? Noticing when your heart's racing, your palms are sweating. Um, noticing things that are changing your body. And I tell folks that if you're noticing changes, to write them down so that you don't have to worry about remembering them when you go to your doctor. Good old notebooks. Okay. So tips for self-care. Taking a nap. Who here loves a good nap? Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple hands. Good. Going for a walk. Dancing, getting your groove on, right? Um, singing a song. Our family has this tradition where we video record ourselves singing happy birthday to whoever's birthday it is, and then we send it to them. So it's a fun thing for the kids to do. Baking a treat, reading a book, and watching a funny video. Does anybody else have good self-care tips they want to share today? That they do? I think in our last group there was a lot of gardening, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of meditative apps out there. Yeah. Calm and headspace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even Peloton has a whole meditation oh. program. Yep, that's the one that I use. I find Google to be very, very good for me. Oh, nice. Whenever I want to learn something. Yep. Yeah. Google is very good to learn stuff with, definitely. And they have, Google even has, back to the sleeping conversation, they have the, you can get like a 12 hour waves video and just play it so you can hear the waves at night. <laughs> no, just help yourself fall asleep. That's one of the things that people can do. All right, so we're going to talk about getting moving now. Um, physical activity can improve brain health. Um, studies show that's actually the, the number one thing that you can do to, to, um, to prevent dementia. So consistent cardiovascular activity will reduce risk of cognitive decline. Physical activity may directly benefit brain cells and reduce other risk factors. For most people, any increase in movement can have an impact on overall health. 
I tell folks that I talk to, I do a lot of um, talks with like ERGs at companies where they're like sitting a lot on Zooms and I'm like, when you go grocery shopping, park as far the farthest way as you can so you're walking. Maybe put some carts away while you're there. Um, maybe when you're at a building, instead of taking the elevator, use the stairs. Like just think about ways that you can increase that movement as much as possible. Um, take up a hobby like gardening that makes you get up and move. Because we've become very sedentary and that's not good for you. All right, so here's some tips for getting physically active. Um, walking around your neighborhood, taking the stairs like I just said instead of the elevator. Um, starting small, so it can be as small as like I'm gonna start you know, walking 10 minutes a day. Um, and then try something fun for yourself. Ask people that you know and love if they wanna join you on that adventure. This next section is about healthy eating how eating an overall healthy diet can reduce your risk of many diseases. And this is not new news. This is, people have been talking about this for years. So um, what's good for your heart is good for your brain and vice versa. Nutritious food is fuel for the brain. Eating a balanced diet may reduce, whoops, I went too fast. Oh, that's okay. The risk of all the things I talked about earlier, cardiovascular health and all those things. So here's some examples of a balanced diet. We've got the DASH diet, which is Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. Never knew the acronym until I started this job. Uh, Mediterranean diet, so think like the Greeks, right? You've got fruits and vegetables, nuts, beans, and whole grains, those Buddha bowls everyone loves so much, um, lean meats, fish, and poultry, and then healthier fats. And what you want to think about is, um, like when you're grocery shopping, going around the perimeter of the grocery store, getting healthy fruits and vegetables, healthy um, nuts and grains, those types of things. Are and you limited the sugar. The perimeter is more healthy. Yep. Has healthier foods than the, the other the ninety percent of the store that's there. Yep. Really? Yep. The stores actually design themselves that way? Yep. Oh, that's well, I never knew that. If you look at so when you go grocery shopping again, most places I didn't go to Costco, so you have to tell if it's Costco too, but like if you go around the perimeter, it's all the healthy stuff, all the fresh stuff. Really? Mm-hmm. And the center is all preserved stuff. Just where the coolers are, I guess. <laughs> So you're, 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 which uh, it seems like you're saying eat uh, nature rather than products. Exactly. Yep. You want to go, the some more the processed products, you go, the worse it is for your health. Some of the products are very good, though, if they know what they're doing. Some of them are good. Just make sure you read the labels. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And we all, like, I love a good s'more every whatever. Like, when I'm camping with the kids. That's a dessert, that's not healthy for you, but every once in a while, it's delicious. So, it, you know, everything in moderation. Um, now I know where to find the nachos. Right? And nachos can be healthy if you find the right recipe. So, <coughs> some other examples of healthy eating. So, using olive oil instead of butter. Um, using sodium-free spices or flavors instead of salt. Huh. My mom salts her quesadillas, which drives me crazy, but she's also a hard-working gardener, so it all kind of counterbalances itself. Um, focus on what you can add in, like adding a green to every meal, whether it's peas or beans or kale, whatever you like, um, and then building meals around vegetables, beans, and whole grains. So for vitamins and supplements, be aware of potential false claims. Focus on balanced nutrition to promote a healthy brain. And talk with your professional, healthcare professional, if you have any questions about supplements. Challenging your brain may help lower your risk of cognitive decline. True or false? True. True. I love this group. This is great. Continue to challenge your brain, and that may lower your risk of cognitive decline, which is pretty straightforward. And that could be like learning a new skill, um, challenging yourself with a new task. I took it upon myself to try snowboarding last year. It was very difficult, and now I have immense respect for snowboarders. It's all in the abs, apparently. Um, and uh, I'm also attempting to learn Spanish and French with my kids who are in those classes. So it does really help to challenge your brain. And it's also fun.
Keeping your mind active forms new connections among brain cells. Um, cognitive engagement encourages blood flow to the brain. Mentally stimulating activities may possibly maintain or even improve cognition at any age. And then engaging in formal education may keep your brain healthy and can provide protection against developing dementia. Hmm. I have another question. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> what is the relationship between memory and Alzheimer's? Is, that, is, is memory, if you lose your memory, does that mean you have Alzheimer's? No. No. Mm -mm. It could mean a lot of different things. Different things. So it's, it, there's no direct there is a connection, but it's not definite. Like it could be something else that it may not be Alzheimer's. It could be um, trending of other things that could be associated with. I don't come from a clinical background, um, but it could be anybody else in the room. If, if you've heard of something that it could be, I don't know. It could be depression. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Depression. Yeah. Depression it's affects. Depression. It could be anxiety that affects memory. And some memory decline is a normal function. Yes, absolutely. But we don't want to pigeonhole it. Right. Because then we would all be, I mean, we all forget things sometimes. What I don't want you to do is go home and think if you forgot where your keys are that you have Alzheimer's. That is not the case. Because if that was the case, I would have had Alzheimer's when I was 21. Yeah. You know. So placing your keys is different than putting your shoes in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that... Thank you. That's mm -hmm. exactly the whole point of these presentations is to give examples of like normal aging versus aging with Alzheimer's or memory, normal memory versus losing memory with Alzheimer's. Um, it would be concerning if you forgot where you were driving. That would tell me that you might be down the Alzheimer's path, right? Or concerning if you lost where you were going in the grocery store. Yeah. Was there another question? Okay. So here are some ways to challenge yourself. Um, taking a class, trying a new cooking technique, learning a new language, building a piece of furniture, um, and then also like learning a new game or a game like Scrabble, which is always new. Okay, Staying connected, you all nailed it, showed up today. Don't need to say much about that one. Being a part of community is so important. And just and that's what being social active, which I've already talked about today. Breezing through here. Okay, so just examples of staying connected, volunteering, scheduling regular phone calls with family and friends, and then visiting family and friends or participating in community events like these today. Here's just a recap of what we've talked about today, and we'll continue that with Lyrica's presentation, who's been so patient with me with all these things. Uh, so here's our resources. This is the last page. Um, we have a 24-7 helpline. I passed out the magnets earlier. That's a number that you can call any time of the day for any reason related to your concerns with memory or cognitive functioning. Um, the number is 1-800-272-3900. And you will reach a professional whose only job it is is to support individuals through these different um, scenarios. And we get about, we're averaging about 30 helpline calls a week statewide which is, when I first started, it was 11, and that was a year and a half ago. So the numbers have gone up, which, is a, which means that people are asking for help, which is a good thing. Um, online resources. Who here likes to go online for things? Yeah, anybody? Yeah. Online resources. Does anybody here like to go online for things? Resources? Yeah. A few folks? OK. Um, so there's alz.org, and you can go on your computer, go online to get resources there. Um, education programs like these that are every two weeks um, that we do. And then also um, communityresourcefinder.org is another online resource. And I just have to say this was an awesome group. Thank you for, I was a little late and I apologize for that. And thank you for all your great questions and for your attention today. I really appreciate it. I'm going to pass the mic. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Joe before I switch gears slightly? Okay, we can circle back to it. Thank you for your you. attention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll switch myself. Who's, the, switch. Sac scoot, scoot. who's the sacrificial person who's willing to answer the phone at midnight? Well, we have a team of 40. Um, we call them call center agents who are also trained in 
this topic that answer the phone at midnight. Well, and it's a rotating shift. Okay. Yep. So it's a true helpline. You don't get you don't get someone who says leave a message and we'll call you. No, you get a real person. But if you so if you are looking for a care consultation, which is a longer conversation, mm -hmm. similar to what you get with your doctor, but if you're looking for something more um, comprehensive, you do have to wait for a call back. But they're mm -hmm. trying to do it within two hours. That's very reasonable. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You get a real person, which is a really nice benefit if you're in crisis. Yeah. Or do you just want to know about something, you know? Yeah. 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 That's, that, that kind Great of question. question. Yeah, two o'clock in the morning, but thank you. Anytime. Yep. Yep. The yep. Vermont chapter is in Burlington? Williston. Williston. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And it's open, so if, you, if you're ever in the area, come visit. We'd love to have you. <laughs> all right. Thank You're you, so patient with all my yeah. Oh, no, it's great. Okay. Thank you for sharing all that really important information about Alzheimer's. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk more about resources that are available and um, kind of just like aging in general. So it's never too late to make healthy choices. We heard that earlier. Um, aging is a path that starts from birth and lifestyles across the lifespan um, and can impact uh, aging and those can change over time. So we heard about nutritious foods, physical activity, social activities, avoiding tobacco, and now we're going to talk a little bit about resources that are available in our area that can help you support any lifestyle changes that you would like to make. Um, so 3450 is a framework adopted by the Vermont Department of Health to help us understand the overwhelming impact of chronic diseases in Vermont and inspire us to take action to change that. 3450 is about making differences at various levels in the community, so schools, businesses, organizations, senior centers, cities, towns, healthcare providers, and all of these places play an important role in shaping health, the health of Vermonters. And our common goal is to make the healthy choice the easy choice, where we live, work, learn, and play. So if you remember from Joe's presentation, we talked about three behaviors, no physical activity, poor diet, and tobacco use, and how those can be risk factors for dementia. The 3450 framework also uses those three behaviors. So three behaviors, no physical activity, poor diet, and tobacco use lead to four diseases, cancer, heart disease, and stroke, type 2 diabetes, and lung disease, which result in more than 50% of deaths in Vermont. So by targeting these three behaviors, we can help reduce the burden of disease and mortality because of them. That's pretty profound. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so yeah. there are th three behaviors, physical inactivity, poor diet, and tobacco use lead to four diseases, cancer, heart disease and stroke, type 2 diabetes and lung disease, and those four diseases result in more than 50% of the deaths in Vermont. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it's a lot. That's huge. It's huge. Um, but what we also know is that the conditions in which we live, play, work, pray, age, also called the social determinants of health, greatly impact how we can make behavior changes. So for example, if you don't have adequate housing or you don't have three square meals a day, it's going to be a lot harder to change your behavior in order to address those um, four diseases that we talked about. So that's where some supportive resources are really important so that we can try to provide everyone with the resources and skills that they need uh, to be able to make their own uh, decisions. So just I'll just briefly cover a few of these. So 211 is a service that kind of like it's a linkage to different resources. So at any point in time when you're in Vermont, you can dial 211 on your phone and that will connect you to a live person or you can go to vermont211.org and they help with public and private state and community resources. So examples of resources they can help with are housing, food, fuel assistance, mental health care, you need a dentist and you can't find one, they can help you access, figure out like where might be accepting a new dentist, things like that. Um, there are also programs like You First through the health department, and You First helps women get free screenings for breast cancer and cervical cancer and heart disease. And those programs are often based on income, so you do have to meet certain criteria, but it, there's lots of information on our website. And I'll make sure that Pam has all of the 
links to resources and she can send those out. Um, Any other questions? Yeah. You know, at this point, you're sort of preaching to the choir. Yeah. That it, that it, there may not be anyone in this room who is lacking in the privilege mm -hmm. of not being in any of those categories. And it's an incredible privilege to not be in living in any one of those. It's, life is so much harder from inside that particular group. Mm -hmm. It <clears throat> seems like we need additionally to know how to discover people in our own lives who fit those, who have those needs and know there's such a thing as a 211 mm -hmm. telephone number. For instance, I think that that's an incredible opportunity. I don't need it. Thank God. You know, if nothing else, it leaves me grateful in a way that I haven't been grateful. I'm not in that need, but there may be somebody who is. Yeah. So. And I think that's where community connection is really important, right? Like if you if you are involved in your community and you know people in your community who might benefit from those resources, you knowing about that can spread the word in your community. Um, so another really great resource is My Healthy Vermont, and that offers free uh, workshops and local support as well as a pre-diabetes risk assessment quiz. So this is a great quiz for anyone. Most people who are pre-diabetic don't know that they're pre-diabetic. This is just like a quick little screening quiz to see if you might have risk factors that would indicate that you could have prediabetes. If you scored high enough on the risk factors, it would prompt you to reach out to your healthcare provider. Um, but it also has workshops that include diabetes management, chronic pain management, smoking cessation, high blood pressure management, chronic disease management, and diabetes prevention. And other places that you can turn for support are your local area agency on aging. So I think that's Senior Solutions for you all. Well, it's the senior center. The senior, yeah. yeah. Yep, and then there's also, in Vermont, there's the different Council on Aging. So I think Senior Solutions covers the Woodstock area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Senior Solutions, is there a Senior Solutions all over Vermont? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so in there's Central, five of them. Yeah, in Central yep. Vermont, it's the um, Central Vermont Council is on Aging. Funded, is it funded by the state government? I'm not sure where their funding comes Good from. Good question. I think it is. Federal and state funding. Is it both? Okay. Yeah, it's both. And then yep. that trickles down to senior centers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, also, other places that you might not think of for resources and could include like libraries. And oftentimes, if there's something that you're looking for, like a specific cookbook about the DASH diet or the Mediterranean diet, you can go to your library and they might be able to order it and have it there uh, for you and for other people in the community to use. And Miracle, are the My Healthy Vermont Workshops online? Yep. Or in they're on they're mostly online, but there are some in person. There are not a lot in person in our area. I think they the last one I saw in person was in Rutland. Okay. Um, but they're they're if they're online, they're available for anyone across the state. And some other online resources include Move Your Way, which is um, through the federal government, and that's tools, videos, fact sheets, and tips to help make it easier to incorporate movement into your day. 802 Quits is Vermont re Vermont's resource for quitting smoking and other tobacco, and they have resources to help make a quit plan, get help quitting, finding free nicotine replacement, tools and tips to help manage your cravings. Talked about My Healthy Vermont and their online pre-diabetes risk quiz and the virtual workshops. And then MyPlate um, also has information on nutrition, budget-friendly food options, and skills to develop healthy, a healthy eating routine. So I'm just going to talk a little, a few about, briefly about a few other health behaviors that are important and in overall health. So we know that oral health is connected to your overall health, so making sure that you're maintaining, you're maintaining good oral health care both um, at home and Seeing your dentist regularly if you are able. I know that it's really hard to find a dentist right now if you're not established with one, so that's why it can be really important to, to um, make sure that you're practicing good oral hygiene at home. 
We talked a little bit about sleep already. Over half of older adults say they sometimes or most of the time wake up too early or are unable to fall back asleep. About 44% of older adults report that they rarely or never sleep through the night without waking for more than a few minutes. And the lack of sleep is linked to chronic diseases and conditions, including type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, dementia, and hypertension. And as we've kind of like talked about over and over again, we know that the behaviors that are important for your like your heart health are also important for your brain health. And there's a lot of connection and overlap there. Hmm. Um, is, yeah. taking, is taking a walk, if you can't go to sleep, take a walk. Is that what I just read? Is that what that was saying? With the middle one. The middle one. 44% uh, of older adults report that they rarely or never sleep through the night without waking for more than a few minutes. Oh, waking looked like walking, I bet. Yeah. So it really looks like walking is uh, <laughs> You can't go to sleep. Don't just keep turning and turning and turning. Get up and go for a walk. You could, yeah, you if that's what works house, for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and Joe talked a bit about mental health as well, and so yeah. we just we know that older adults are at increased risk of d depression. That social contact is now accepted is now an accepted protective protective factor and can prevent feelings of isolation that can lead to depression. Um, and the depression is not a normal part of growing older. And so things that you can do, visiting your local library, volunteering, joining a club or community center, visiting friends or family, and of course, coming to the senior center. <laughs> uh, so here are a few photos that illustrate how Vermonters stay active. Uh, because the conditions in which we live are so important to our health, age-friendly communities and livable communities are essential for helping to support healthy behaviors. An age-friendly community is livable for people of all ages. Uh, so the idea is that if you design a community that is accessible for older adults, it's going to be accessible for everyone in that community. And um, they, the some of the idea is to make make a neighborhoods more walkable, have multimodal transportation options, enable access to key services, provide opportunities to participate in community activities, and support housing that's affordable and adaptable. So what are we doing at the state level? Vermont has several state plans that serve different purposes, which offer complementary strategies for addressing aging well. Collectively, these plans will ensure a comprehensive goal um, and to advance towards our mutual goal, which is to enable all Vermonters to age with dignity, respect, and independence to the healthiest manner possible. The Action Plan for Alzheimer's Disease and Related Dementia and Healthy Aging is aligned with the National Plan to Address Alzheimer's Disease and the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap to hone the response of public health, healthcare systems, advocacy organizations, and other partners. Each plan has a unique scope and focus, and this action plan specifically focuses on reducing the risk of dementia, early detection of dementia, recognition and support of family caregivers, and promoting body and brain health. So thank you all, that's the end of my presentation. I think we'd be happy to hear any more questions that folks have or anything they wanna share that came up for them during this presentation. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Thank you all for being thank such you. a good this audience. Thank you, such a lively group. Yeah. Thank you all both for your knowledge and for your time. Yeah, thank oh, you. Course.